So this is actually a first for me. Usually I make the thing and then write the script, and I have to kind of act like I hadn't made it yet and didn't know how it was going to turn out, and then like fudge the verb tenses. This time I actually haven't started sewing yet. See, look, fabric. So it's simple. In the last video, I made myself a set of linen skirts to refresh my wardrobe. In this video, I'm going to make a set of tops to match them. I have a lot of ideas for different designs that I could try, and several fabric choices. However, I am going to limit myself to four tops, mostly because I think that these tops are going to work for me, but I haven't tried it yet, so I'm not 100% certain. I did try something similar a couple of years ago, and it did not work. Those peaks are not good on me. I thought that they would lengthen the waist, but without boning, they just folded up and looked wrinkly. Also, the necklines were cut a bit low for comfort, and I thought that if I built in underwire, it would be great because then I could wear them without a bra, but I just felt like I was wearing a bra. And finally, the lace-up section in the back was not practical enough. It turns out I'm just not going to wear something very often if I have to lace it up every time. I improved the bodice pattern last summer, but then I got wrapped up in wedding stuff and never made the video, so consider this project that I'm starting now a third attempt. I want tops that are fitted and flattering, but also comfortable and somewhat size adjustable. I want them because I'd like to wear skirts in the summer and mix and match my wardrobe instead of just cycling through the same set of dresses over and over again. But how do I accomplish it? I think that all of the designs I brainstormed can be categorized into five different basic bodice patterns, depending on where the bust seams are located. There is the standard darted bodice, which I think I'll use for colored tops and then the standard princess seamed bodice, which is definitely more practical for some designs. And the straight seamed bodice, which I think I'll mostly use for square neck bodices, and bodices where I want a contrast panel. It would also be easiest to convert into a sundress top. There's also this wrapped bodice, which would be limited in designs, but very size adjustable. And an underbust seam bodice, which is standard in a lot of vintage dresses. I'm just like making these names up, so either go with it, or if you do know the right one, correct me in the comments. So that's five. However, I said that I was going to limit myself to four bodices this time, and I really should limit myself even further. Instead of drafting four completely different patterns, I think that I'll use two base bodices and make two variations of each. I think I want to start out in this video with the princess seam and the straight seam. I'm most excited to wear them, and with summer quickly approaching, I'd like some lightweight stuff. Let's plan the princess seamed bodices. One is going to cut inward on the shoulders, have a high neckline and narrow straps. The other is going to cut inward on the shoulders, but it's going to have a double breasted front with a high V neckline and it will button up at the princess seam. I thought about making this one with darts, but a princess seam is really going to be much better for reinforcing those buttons. I've generally had good luck with similar cut in styles in the past and I like my shoulders. So for fabrics, I'm going to use this butter yellow cotton gauze for the first, and then this cotton herringbone for the second. The second bodice is a vague callback to the oft cosplayed Pride and Prejudice dress. I have a whole nother chunk of this herringbone fabric, and I'm thinking that maybe later on I could make a matching skirt, so I'm just gonna go with it. The straight seam bodices will also have two variations. I'll start with a basic square neckline, just raised a bit so that it doesn't look too narrow on my torso, and I wanna make this one from my white embroidered cotton. And then I'll trim that pattern away and convert it into a sweetheart neckline sundress top. With this top, something that will help raise the visual mass is using wider straps instead of my normal spaghetti straps. I'm going to cross the straps in the back to bring them in on my shoulders, and also to keep them from slipping off since they won't be elasticized. I suspect that a narrow bodice like this with a low neckline needs a vertical line, so it will button up the front. For the fabric, I'm leaning towards this pink linen calling back to those original Instagram inspiration pics. Now, the key detail with this project that I think will make or break it in terms of practicality is this. I've experimented with similar bodices and ideas before. I am charmed by this ideal of clothing with only natural materials and buttons and lace-up closures. No zippers, no elastic, none of that ugly modern crap. There is something so elegant and alluring about clothing with old-fashioned closures. It makes me think of leather-bound books in a moss-covered cabin in the woods. Not to mention that clothing with elastic is destined to break down much sooner. However, I have tried to live that ideal and it didn't work. The best way I think I can explain it is this. I am used to clothing with elasticity. I'm used to my clothing being quick and easy to put on. 
I know historically people wore corsets without elasticity or quick closure methods, but they were used to it and they didn't have another choice. When I try it, I find myself ignoring those pieces and just putting back on my modern clothes. So here is rule number one for these bodices. Each must have a quick closure. Buttons are quick enough, but lacing cords are not. If there are no buttons, then there must be a discreet zipper in the side seam. I found these short, separating, invisible zippers on Amazon. They feel a little bit stiff, so I'm not sold on them yet, but I'm going to try them out with this project, so I'll let you know. And the second rule. Each bodice will still have a lacing panel in the back, but that panel will be laced with an elastic cord. This will provide both size adjustability and stretch. I like to avoid elastic, but this will be easy to replace if it wears out, so I'm okay with it. This idea is basically my alternative to the smocking panel that you see in the back of every store-bought dress nowadays. I used to think that they were sloppy, a sign of the times, only put in because the brand didn't want to make things that actually fit well. I mean, I still think that's true, but I've tried bodices without any elasticity, and it's not like they were horribly uncomfortable and I would never wear them, but they were just barely not comfortable enough for me to grab for daily wear. Okay, I think that's all I've got. Let's get started. Okay, to make these patterns, I started with my basic princess seam bodice. Back in this video, I drafted it using my original darted bodice block. However, you could use just any basic princess seam from any basic commercial pattern, as long as you make a mock-up and do the proper fittings and adjustments to make it fit you perfectly. I started by making a mock-up as well, since it's been quite a while since I used this pattern, and I wanted to just make sure that everything still fit the way I remembered. Trying it on, I found that it was still pretty smooth and fit pretty tightly, which is just what I want. However, it was a bit loose under the bust. It kind of came down straight, and I wanted it to curve in a lot more sharply underneath my bust in order to keep the tops from riding up when I wear them. So I pinched it in under the bust, and I also marked a few different places along the shoulders where I'm going to be trimming it down to give it the neckline that I want. I made that adjustment on my mock-up and then trimmed the neckline down on one side, basically eyeballing it. And when I tried it on again, it seemed fine, so I decided to go ahead and start the final pattern. One way that you can turn an adjusted mock-up into a pattern is by seam ripping all of the seams and then laying the fabric out flat on fresh paper and tracing it. I decided to take a shortcut because there wasn't that much I was adjusting on this pattern, and instead I took the pieces that I cut off and I traced those onto my original pattern. Then for the back of the pattern, I was kind of stuck on this project for a while. I was so excited to sew, but then I found myself procrastinating just getting started with this project. And I realized that it was probably because it was just such a basic project, I was just too bored to do it. <laughs> so I decided to try and make it a little bit more interesting by adding a cool cutout design in the back panel of the bodice. So once that was done, my pattern looked like this. For fabric today, I'm going to be using a half yard of this buttery yellow cotton gauze from Joann's. I cut out all of my pieces and then using a disappearing ink blue marker, I traced out both sides of the flower design onto the back panel. The construction of this is going to be pretty simple other than the cutout. I started by sewing the princess seams of the lining and the outer shell pieces, and then clipping and ironing the seams open. Now I have my full front panel and my full back panel, and I'm just going to set everything except for the back panel aside until I get the cutouts made. For the cutouts, I'm going to use this fusible cotton interfacing. I think it'll be perfect for this because it is technically fabric, it's just plain old woven cotton fabric, but it has the interfacing glue on one side of it, so I'll be able to use that glue to my advantage, but still have the structural strength of the fabric. So I cut out eight petals and the center, and then I traced around each one with my disappearing blue marker and started lining these petals up with the petals on the bodice. Sewing these petals on was a little bit difficult. Not too bad, but it might be kind of hard if you're a beginner at sewing. It was just very fiddly and time consuming and you had to move slow. But I essentially just traced over the blue outlines on each petal. I didn't do the center yet because everything was kind of overlapping, but after that was done, I trimmed away from the inside, cutting the seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch, and then clipping in towards the tip of each petal. Ironing these right side out also turned out to be a lot more challenging than I expected, mostly because of the fact that the interfacing had glue on it. I wasn't able to just iron it all. I had to be very, very careful with not ironing over anything that wasn't already positioned properly. So it was just, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it did work, and I still honestly can't think of a better way that I could have done that. 
I just thought it was really cool looking how crisp the cutouts all turned out. Then I did the exact same thing with the center, stitching around it, and then since this was a tight circle, I added tiny clips all the way around it. And then I turned it to the inside and ironed it down. Now, my original thought had been to leave these as just simple cutouts. I like that idea, however, I decided that for this project it wasn't the right decision. For one, I was afraid that my bra would show from inside the cutout, and I didn't want to have to deal with that every time I wore it. For another thing, I didn't really care for the pale yellow color of the fabric. I just didn't feel like it looked that great against my skin tone, and it wasn't a very good contrast for the cutouts to show up. And for a final factor, any tight-fitting bodice like this is going to have a level of, like, pulling, and with these cutouts, I just felt like it was going to weaken the integrity of the bodice as a whole, and it might fit a little bit funky. Long story short, I like this, and I might use it again on something else in the future, but if I was going to use these cutouts the way I had originally intended, I should use a stronger fabric with a slightly looser, more boxy cut that isn't going to be stretched as much, and in a color that was a little bit more vibrant against my skin tone. Lining it with lace was another option that would have worked pretty well. I just didn't have any lace that I thought looked good with the color, <laughs> and I didn't feel like driving into town to buy something just for this. So I ended up lining all of the petals with fabric from my stash. I happened to have a couple that worked really great with the colors. And even this I could have done much more simply. I could have just used one solid piece of fabric behind all of the cutouts, but there was this nice striped pattern on the linen that I was gonna use for the petals and I wanted the stripes to all radiate out from the center, which means that I had to cut out and sew on each one individually. Yes, it was a pain in the butt. And yes, in the end I could have just like appliqued on top and done zigzag stitches with the machine and it would have taken a fraction of the time. But you know, it was a challenge and it got me interested in the project and helped me just get going again. So I don't really regret it, I just wouldn't do it that way a second time around. So <laughs> I hand stitched around every single petal and the center and when I was done it looked like this. I'm actually really happy with it and something about the pinpricked look of hand running stitches just gets me all excited about sewing. <laughs> with the applique done, I could start attaching all of these pieces. The first thing I needed to do was sew a strip of my yellow scrap fabric into a nice narrow tube, which will turn right side out to become the spaghetti straps for the bodice. I took the back pieces of the bodice and the bodice lining and lined them up, pinning all the way around them. I stitched across the bottom edge of the bodice and then under the two armpit sections, but I left the sides and the top edge open. I took my little spaghetti straps and inserted them at the two edges of the back neckline, and then stitched across that edge, reinforcing the corners. Okay, there's something we need to cover. If you remember, my original plan with these bodices was to have a lace-up section in the back of each one. I did not do that with this bodice because I thought that it would get in the way of the cutout section in the back. So I decided to skip that part, but I still wanted to build in a little bit of size adjustability in a different way. So here's how I did that. When the bodice back was still right sides together, I stitched down one side seam with a very, very narrow selvage. And then on the other side, I stitched it at the two corners, but I left an opening in the middle that'll turn the bodice right side out through. So trimming the corners and clipping all of the curved edges, I turned the bodice back right side out and it looks like this. Then I did a lot of hand stitching, which I didn't bother to film, but basically I did hand running stitches all the way around the outer edges of this bodice back, and then I also stitched down the two princess seams. But yeah, the back side is now done and I just need to do the front. I placed the front and the lining right sides together and stitched all the way around it. I did very, very narrow selvages at the side seams again, leaving another gap to turn it right side out. And I also left two little gaps at the corners of the neckline to insert the spaghetti straps into. Then I turned it right side out and did that same amount of hand stitching. And when I was done, it looked like this. I placed the bodice front and back right sides together and then sewed one of the side seams. In the other side seam, I planned to insert a zipper. I found this really cool, interesting zipper on Amazon. It was a seven inch separating invisible zipper, which I'd never seen before. <laughs> However, sewing it was an absolute pain in the butt. And then when I was finished, I found that like it literally would not zip up. It was, it was impossible. I seam ripped it out and I still couldn't get the thing to zip up. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's a cool concept, but it just doesn't seem to work right. I had another white one and it was very tricky, but it did zip up eventually. So maybe this cream one was just kind of a dud. 
Either way around, I just figured it was kind of a waste of time and I should probably just use a basic coil zipper. So I inserted that into the side seam and it zips up just fine. <laughs> However, I don't really care for that little white strip at the side, but it sits under the arm. It's fine, I'll take it. Maybe I'll be able to figure out something better to use in a future project. For the sewn side seam, I also fell down the sides. So this was my whole strategy with the making it size adjustable. I figured that if I finished the side seams before I stitched them together, it would be very, very simple in the future to seam rip and adjust that in or out if I need to make it larger or smaller. I should have added extra to my selvage, but I just hadn't really planned it out that far ahead. But I think that it'll work. There was one last thing I needed to finish, and after trying it on, I marked where the spaghetti straps needed to attach to the front corners. I trimmed them down and inserted them through the little gaps that I had left earlier. And then since I had already used hand stitching for any visible top stitching, I decided to go ahead and hand stitch those spaghetti straps in. And that's it. This one's done. It took about two days total with the patterning and the sewing. Maybe not complete work days, but all of the hand stitching I did and the whole uh, reverse applique thing definitely was a time eater. <laughs> <sighs> All right, here's top number one, and honestly, it turned out pretty great. <laughs> I was very concerned with the whole issue of crop tops, because I have never worn crop tops before. I've never been comfortable with, like, you know, the solid strip of just pale midriff showing. Um, so this whole project and this whole, like, direction that I've planned out my future wardrobe has been hinging on something that I didn't even know if I was going to like wearing. <laughs> But I can say, yes, absolutely, this is awesome. One of the like actual perks of being short-waisted that I'd never considered before until my friend pointed it out to me is that if I'm wearing a crop top that comes down to my waist and I'm wearing a skirt that comes up to my waist, there's like hardly any midriff showing. Like I don't mind a little, you know, crack showing every once in a while if I move. I just don't like things that, you know, look, you know, super wide. So. Luckily that's not the case, and I actually love wearing this top. It's so lightweight and comfortable, and it's so liberating not to have all of this bulk trying to tuck into the skirt. So I consider this whole concept a huge success. Now for this top specifically, there's only a couple things about the construction that I wish I'd done differently. Uh, one with the patterning, it's still a tiny bit loose right here at this princess seam. I think I could have taken off like a half inch from each side of the pattern. And then of course, I was not really happy with this white zipper. However, I did find an Etsy shop that sells a whole bunch of colors of lightweight separating zippers that you can customize the length of, which is a total game changer. Now for my rating of this top, I am rating things based off of how well they are fulfilling this function that I had intended them for and this vision of my ideal wardrobe that I'm trying to get closer towards. And with this top, I feel like I got a little bit off the path in the styling of it. I feel like I was paying more attention to just the generic things that look good on my body type and not enough attention to the like styles and aesthetics that I'm actually drawn towards, which tend to be more classic or vintage inspired. And the pale yellow color of this it's not the best for me. I probably would have been a little bit happier with something a little bit more autumn gold or mustard colored. And then of course this like high neck halter style is just very, very modern looking. So overall as a piece, it's fantastic. However, I only feel like I can give it four out of five stars because it's just not quite there yet, but it is very beautiful and summery and I'm sure I'm going to be wearing it a ton. And I love the flower. The flower is awesome. <laughs> All right, let's see how I do with top number two. All right, bodice number two. Luckily, I still had my mock-up from the first top, so I just tried that on again and made some markings where I wanted to cut the neckline and shoulders in. I had been kind of on the fence about whether I wanted to follow through with my wraparound double-breasted top, but when I was trying on the mock-up, I realized that I really did want it to button up the center and have more of a waistcoat effect. So that's how I trimmed this mock-up. I tried it on again and decided that it was alright and I could go for it. Tracing these amendments onto a fresh copy of the pattern, this is what it looks like. For this bodice, the fabric I'm going to be using is this lightweight cotton herringbone that I found on the clearance rack at Hobby Lobby for $4 a yard. So this one's gonna be cheap. 
Since I had plenty of it and it was so cheap, I decided to use this fabric for the lining as well. And I'd like to draw your attention to that side seam I'm cutting now. Notice that I've added an extra half inch to the width. That's because I really liked the size adjustability method that I used for the last bodice and I wanted to try that again, but actually plan for it and give myself excess so that there is plenty of room to expand it later if I ever need to. The sewing for this one is going to be extremely simple and beginner friendly. To start with, I pinned together on the outer and the lining all of the princess seams and the shoulder seams. I stitched all of these seams and then clipped and ironed everything flat. And here's what they look like at this point. Next, I'm going to make two small pieces. I want this to button up the front with loops instead of a button placket, which means that I need one, the loops, and two, a facing piece to sit behind the loops and prevent bra from showing. So I cut a nice rectangle for that facing piece and sewed the bottom and top edge of it and turned it right side out and ironed it. Then for the loops, I cut a one inch wide piece, sewed it into a tube, and then turned that right side out. There's only one last thing that I need to do before I start assembling everything, and that is to cut some fusible interfacing to go along these front edges. I pinned the facing piece onto the right side of the bodice, and then I divided my narrow tube into eight equal parts. I spaced those out evenly across the left side of the bodice and pinned them into place, and then stay stitched the facing and the loops down. Now I can line up the facing and the outer pieces right sides together and pin all the way around this giant piece. When I'm done, it's going to be quite treacherous to work with, and you can see that at one of the side seams I've left a gap, which is what I'm going to be turning this whole thing right side out through. I sewed all the way around that thing at a half inch seam allowance, although at the four edges for the side seams, I cut that down to as narrow as possible, which was a little bit below a quarter of an inch. When I was done, I clipped the corners, I clipped the curves, I turned it all right side out, and I pinned it together, and it is, once again, a treacherous porcupine. I'm just going to be top stitching all the way around these edges. I love the look of the hand stitching, but part of this project is about just letting go and cranking some projects out so that I have actual wearable pieces instead of all of these individual little masterpieces of hand stitching that I don't actually wear. So working all the way around that, when I was done, it looked like this. Now, one more thing that I want to do is I also want to top stitch down all of the princess seams. Because when you have princess seams in a bagged lining like this, a lot of times after the first time in the washing machine, that raw edge on the inside gets all like folded over and wrinkled up and there's no way to iron it at that point. So I figured that while everything was crisp, I could just stitch in the ditch and it would be a nice subtle way to keep everything smooth and flat and positioned where I want it. So when that's done, I pinned together the two side seams, and because I left myself an extra half inch of seam allowance and only used a quarter of that to finish it, I'm going to be sewing this seam at three quarters of an inch. I opened those seams and then felled them flat, and I'm down to just the buttons. For buttons, I searched through my vintage stash, and I found these eight beautiful little hand-carved shell buttons that just looked perfect with the colors of the herringbone. Now, the first time I tried to sew these on, I just tried to sew them on flat like you normally would a button, and I quickly realized that that was just not compatible with the loops. I've only ever done loops before with shank buttons, so what I ended up doing is I made them work anyways. I took some little beads, roughly three millimeters, I think, and I passed the thread through those beads with every stitch on the buttons. And that raised the buttons a little bit from the surface of the fabric and gave it enough room for the loops to sit behind them smoothly. And here it is. This one only took me about a day to complete. It was a super beginner friendly project and if you are newer to sewing and you like the look of it, I would say give it a shot. It was also super cheap too, like unusually cheap because I'd gotten such a good deal on the fabric. Okay, top number two. This one I am so excited about. I'm really glad that I just went with a simple button-up center. It has that kind of waistcoat look a little bit, but it's still very, very practical for summer, and it's very lightweight. It's so comfortable. I love this one. The only small technical flaw with it is that I think I could have done a little bit of contouring around the base of the V. I'll talk more about contouring with the next bodice that I make. Um, that or it stretched out a little bit because it was cut across the bias for a pretty long V and I didn't do any stay stitching or other form of stabilization. So it could have just stretched out or it could be the contouring. Either way, it's a tiny bit loose through here. However, 
it's, it's fine. Like, that's just like it's the, the, the only thing I could think of that I don't absolutely love about it. Yeah, this one is like, this one is five out of five stars because it perfectly hits all of those points. Like, it looks good on my body type, but it's also a good versatile color scheme. It's practical, wearable, comfortable, and it just perfectly hits that classic vintage inspiration that I've been trying to find. So yes, top number two, fantastic. Let's see about top number three. Okay, onto the square neck bodice. I know I originally said that I was going to make this pattern have a vertical seam kind of ending in the corner of the neckline, but I was having such a good time working with this princess seam bodice that I had finally perfected, I just didn't see a reason to go back and start from scratch. So I decided to make it with standard princess seams, and depending on how long you've been watching my channel, you may or may not remember when I made this red plaid dress. It had a square neckline and I had a lot of problems with it gaping. So what I ended up doing was inserting a bit of elastic around the neckline just to keep it shut. And that worked well enough, but after the fact, I learned that there was such a thing as contouring, which is basically when you cut little tiny pie slices out of the neckline of a bodice, because being low cut, it sits against your body differently than it would if it was more covering. So I took some measurements off of that plaid dress and used them to start altering my princess seam pattern. I apologize for how much of this got cut out of the shot, but I started cutting through my neckline in several different places and overlapping it just a tiny bit, like an eighth of an inch in each spot. Then because I had made foundational changes to the pattern pieces, I made a fresh mock-up. And while I thought that the neckline of the plaid dress was a little bit low, this one was definitely higher than I wanted. So I ended up just trimming it away while I was wearing it to try and guesstimate the neckline that I actually wanted. I noticed that instead of gaping at the front of the bodice, it was actually gaping a little bit at the armpits and shoulders. You can see that there's some pulling on the fabric going from that corner of the neckline up out towards my shoulder. To me, that indicated that I had overcompensated a little bit. I had actually contoured the neckline a little bit too much. So before I cut my fabric, I actually went and eased out a couple of those spots on the pattern. Other than that, I thought it looked good and I got to cutting everything out. The fabric that I'll be using for this bodice is an embroidered eyelet cotton that I got from Joann's. And you can see that I've refolded it with the selvages in the center so that I can cut both the center front and center back out on fold lines. I also cut a half inch excess on the side seams of this bodice because I'm going to be repeating that same size adjustability method on this project. For the lining, I tried using these scraps of linen that I've had in my stash forever, but I just could not make everything fit, not with piecing, not with nothing. I didn't have any other white linen that was pre-washed and ready to go, so I just used this lightweight cotton lawn. The sewing for this one is also going to be extremely simple. I started out by pinning the princess seams and the shoulder seams of both the lining and the outer fabric. I sewed all of those seams and then clipped and ironed everything open. Then I went to pin the outer and the lining right sides together. However, I realized I'd forgotten one small thing. Because there was no center opening, I wasn't going to be leaving myself anything to turn the bodice right side out through. So I seam ripped open one of the shoulders and that is what I'm going to have to be turning this thing right side out through. If those shoulder straps were any narrower, this might not have worked and instead I would have left an opening in the side seam again. However, for this particular pattern, it did barely work. So here you can see it pinned together all the way around the edges of the front and the back, just leaving an opening at the shoulder and then a few inches down on either side. I'm going to be sewing all the way around this and again, I'm going to be using half inch seam allowances except quarter of an inch seam allowances on the side seams. Then I trimmed the corners and clipped all of the curved edges and then I struggled to turn everything right side out. It did barely fit through that shoulder seam, but honestly it would have been way easier to just leave a gap in the side. So if you're newer to sewing, I would recommend that. So the way I'm going to be attaching those shoulders can be a little bit confusing, but I promise it's not actually that hard. I have left the shoulders open for both the front and back pieces, and I also left open a few inch gap going down the side. I'm going to take those shoulders and line them up right sides together, and then stitch across both the lining and the outer. I should have filmed turning this right side out, I did not, but basically after you sew that seam, you can just straighten it out and it will fold neatly to the inside. You'll have a little bit of a selvage hanging out along that shoulder, but because it's a fairly straight edge, you can just tuck that under and pin it. And since I'll be pinning all the way around this bodice, that raw edge that's tucked under at the shoulder will just mesh right in with everything else. 
Now I'm top stitching all the way around it again. Yes, hand stitches are beautiful, but this was so fast and easy last time. <laughs> now it looks like this. And again, I'm going to pin down those princess seams and top stitch in the ditch. Next, I pinned together one side seam and sewed it at three quarters of an inch. Then I opened that side seam and felled the edges down. Next, I'll be inserting a zipper. This is the exact same zipper that I used for the yellow bodice. It just is white, so it actually looks good here. <laughs> This zipper was easy to sew in. I'm used to doing invisible zippers and I kind of just sewed it like that. And then I just folded that edge underneath and fold everything down. And another bodice is done. And this one was so fast. It was like an afternoon project. Okay, top number three. This one I have mixed feelings about. I, on the one hand, I love it. I love the white, it's so versatile, and then this time of year, as soon as I start to get just like a little bit of color back in my skin, I love wearing bright whites. I hate wearing bright whites in the winter time when I'm pale, but this time of year, they just, I feel very good in it. I love the embroidered texture of this cotton, especially paired with the linen skirts. It's just, I love these two textures together. So on that hand, it's good. On the other hand, I feel like the pattern itself could have used a little bit more work it's still kind of pulling a little bit this direction, which means that I still had overcompensated a bit with the contouring. The square neckline, it's fine. I feel like it could have been just a tiny fraction, like, lower. And also, it's just a little bit more rounded than I wanted and not quite as square as I was aiming for. Another thing is that, like, it's kind of narrow here, and then it kind of widens back out by the time it gets to my shoulder. And then it kind of cuts in pretty close to the shoulder in the back which I can feel when I'm moving my arm back. So I've already been altering this pattern and I'm going to do some more work on it before I were to publish it or size grade it or use it again myself. I'm really tempted to make this whole top over again just because I feel like it's so close to perfection and the fabric like wasn't too expensive. I could just very simply make it better, but I should probably prioritize other things first. So this one I'm gonna give a four out of five. I love the style of it, but the patterning just isn't quite there yet. All right, finally, the linen bodice. For this one, I had planned on doing a very different pattern, but I was just barely not happy enough with the square neck bodice that I really wanted to give the pattern another go. So I figured I could give it basically the same silhouette as my original design, it just won't have the same seam lines. So I started out by copying my center front piece and giving it a new sweetheart neckline and an extension for a button placket. I did do some work on the arm's eye of this pattern. I kind of narrowed the strap in the front and then scooped out a little bit wider of an arm's eye in the back. And of course I altered the contouring a little bit. I'm just trying to get everything to lay perfectly flat, no pulling anywhere. For fabric, I had been originally planning on using this pale pink linen from my stash. However, it's not a very good color for me and it doesn't really match that well with the other items I've made recently. So I ordered a half yard of this linen from Burnley and Trowbridge that was labeled light pumpkin. I really love the color and it looks good with all three of my linen skirts. So out of that half yard, I was able to cut all of my outer pieces and lining pieces for the front. However, I did have to pull back out my cotton lawn for the back lining pieces. I don't want to go into too much detail with the stitching and the construction for this one because it is getting to be a bit repetitive at this point. My goal with these bodices was to try and simplify everything as far down as I possibly can so that they are very quick, simple, easy pieces of clothing for me to crank out and just fill out my summer wardrobe. But it is worth noting that I did need to add some fusible interfacing at the front edges since this is going to be a button placket. Once again, I lined everything up right sides together and pinned all the way around it. This time I'm leaving the opening at one of the side seams for the back piece. Stitch around it, turn it right side out and top stitch, stitch in the ditch over the princess seams, and sew the side seams at three quarters of an inch. I felled the side seams down to finish them and all I have left are the buttons and buttonholes. For the buttons, I have been getting a little bit sick of going to Joann's now that it's half an hour away and of paying $5 for a card of four buttons. So I looked on Amazon and I found this pack of 200 wooden buttons for $10, which if you break that down, that's five cents a button. That's pretty awesome. And they're basic standard versatile buttons that I'll be able to use on anything. So to me, that was worth it. So I used six buttons for this closure. On the herringbone bodice, I used eight. 
I like very dense buttons for bodices because no cleavage gap. And then of course I added the buttonholes and this piece is done as well. This project I actually don't know how long it took me to make because I had to wait for the buttons to ship, but I'm gonna guess that this is about a day project. All right, and top number four. <laughs> So this one I literally just put on for the first time. I only got the button sewn on last night. This one feels a tiny bit tighter than the others. I'm not sure if I changed something with patterning or if it's just because I haven't been wearing it yet. I haven't like broken it in yet. We'll see. With this one I was attempting to fix the problems with the square neck bodice I used last time and I think I pretty much achieved that. The straps sit nice and smooth. I don't feel any like pulling or imbalance there. Um, you can see that I trimmed it in so it now comes up straight instead of like widening out to the tip of my shoulder weirdly. And then it cuts in a little bit further away from my shoulder making it a little bit more comfortable for movement. So like yeah, five out of five stars. I mean I might still tweak the pattern a tiny bit but it's like 99% there. So yes, finally, finally. <laughs> Alright so talking about this project overall. I have been wearing the same five dresses just on repeat every day of the summer for like the last 10 years. So it's been so nice to actually get to like mitch match the different colors of the tops and skirts. I want to make a lot more but I also need to like not just do these all summer long. And I do feel like with four tops and three skirts I like I have the foundation of a brand new summer wardrobe and I don't need to rely on those old dresses anymore. I'm excited, I learned a lot, and again, if you are not comfortable with crop tops, these are bodice patterns. You could just sew a skirt onto it and it's a dress. So all of these patterns, once I finish my refinements, they will be size graded and they'll be put up on my Patreon. I'd expect to see them in about two weeks, but yeah, I just, I don't even know what else there is to say. I'm just really happy because it actually worked. It's actually good. <laughs> So yeah, I think this video is going to be a little bit long, but I'll do a short chicken update just so you can see how the babies are doing. All right, very quick chicken update for you. I cleaned out the ashes from the old fire pit and the chickens have been enjoying their new dust bath. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Hi, pretty bird. Yes, they love the ash pit. So one of the great things about having chickens in the country versus in town is there's a lot less things you have to have because they find it in nature. So here are our babies. They're all looking very much like just miniature chickens. And this is our stage two setup. So what we'll do is we will move the blue box and this little run over to this portion of the big chicken run where there's a little door. And so we line up the little door and I'll put this cage on the other side of the door for the first like week or so so that the babies can come back and forth and get out into the run, but they'll still be protected while they're learning where the door is. Once they have learned where the door is, I move this cage to the side and let them out. And it's been a couple weeks now and they are slowly getting more and more confident. I've been seeing them out playing quite a lot the last couple of days. So yeah, they'll basically stay in this setup until they're big enough that they can't fit through the door anymore and then it will be time to integrate with the adults. Hi Turkey. Hi pretty girl. Um, let's see. Oh, sad news. We lost the little guinea fowl. Yeah, she started wanting to sleep outside of the run. Um, and at first I could kind of like chase her back in the door, but after a few days she kind of figured out to just run off into the darkness. And yep, one morning big pile of feathers. I think it's because she was learning from the turkeys and so she was sleeping on the ground like the turkeys do, but she didn't want to be cooped up anymore. But she didn't have any guinea fowl teaching her to fly up into the trees. So it's quite sad, but that is the way of things sometimes. Hi babies! Oh, looks like you're out of water too. Look at how big they're all getting! Oh my goodness! And all these little black ones look just like their mother. Yeah, they want me to refill their water. All right, I'll be right back. There they are, all quite thirsty. And a bunch of them jumped out while I was gone. Hey guys, come on, come on. Come here, you. Hit. There you go. Oh, okay. There you go. 
And surprisingly, we have not lost any babies yet. I usually lose one about this stage. When they start getting adventurous, one of them will usually get too adventurous. But so far, so good. Look at Bonnie. Look at her. Isn't she so cool? And then there's DJ with the black comb. And Tiger Lily. Hey, you. Leave him alone. Not your house. Come on. Go. Go. Turkeys. Oh, my goodness. Hello there. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? <sighs> Broody Mama is still diligently exiting, even though I should check the dates, but I'm pretty sure she should have hatched by now. So I'm considering if she doesn't hatch in a few more days, going to tractor supply and getting a few chicks and seeing if she's willing to adopt. <sighs> Poor broody mama. Of course, there could be peeping in there that I just can't hear over that peeping. We'll see. Gimpy is limping worse than usual. He might have hurt himself again. <laughs> Oh, what, turkey? Yes, 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 I know, I know. You're not getting nearly as much attention as you feel like you should. It's okay, good girls. And Caleb is out there clearing out some of the aluminum to take it to recycling tomorrow. He has finally finished the soffiting on the house. So, that has been your chicken update. I will see you later.